I've now created all my er regions of interest for looking at accuracy assessment. So this is using the world view image, so the high resolution image, and I now have regions of interest that match exactly those classes that I have in the Landsat classified image. Now what I need to do is these won't overlay the Landsat image initially, so we need to just make some a slight modification there. The way Envy works with its regions of interest is it doesn't go by map coordinates, but just um, by image coordinates, which means that it doesn't actually understand where the regions of interest are in space, but just with respect to um, the upper left-hand corner of the image where the region of interest was created. So what we need to do is if we go up to options and reconcile ROIs via map and we, that allows us to select which regions of interest we'd then like to overlay with our Landsat classification. So I'm going to go select all items and OK. And now it's asking me which file I would like to reconcile those to and that's my classified image. So my minimum distance smooth classified image and I click OK on that. And that's all that happens. You won't actually see anything pop up say that that's, that's OK. But now what happens is if I go to my Landsat classified image and I go overlay region of interest, now I have the option for all of those um, regions of interest to appear on that image. What I've also done is found some burnt areas on the original Landsat image. So remembering that these aren't covered in the Worldview image, so I had to refine them on the Landsat image, and I've and because it's the image is exactly the same as the classified image in terms of its image dimensions, um, this will the region of interest will appear automatically in the classified image as well. So if we now look at the regions of interest that are available on my classified image, I, I have burnt area because that's because I pulled that up before and these are the ones that I just reconciled just a moment ago. You can see them listed all in the region of interest tool. So if I'm then to go through to my Landsat image, um, you'll see you can see some small cyan areas that are representing the regions of interest that I'm using for accuracy assessment for the urban area. Um, you'll be able to see some areas out in the water um, if we pop down to this area of the image you'll see the burnt areas for example. Okay so the next step that we need to do is to run the accuracy assessment. So we go classification, post classification and look at confusion matrix and we're going to do that using our ground truth ROIs. Okay? So it's not necessarily meaning ground truth as in you were there which that is an option but for us that's, a, that's what we've used with the high resolution reference image. So we click on that one. Then the classification input file again is the minimum distance classification and OK. And because we've spelt the region of interest names the exact same way as the original classification, they automatically pair up. So you can see woody vegetation to woody vegetation, urban to urban, etc. If there's any classes that are not in, that are either in your regions of interest that you've used for your accuracy assessment or that they're in the classification but not in the re region of interest, um, they'll appear up the top here and you'll need to see if you want to match them. So for example in the classification image you can see that there's two classes here, both un unclassified and masked pixels and they don't have a matching ground truth region of interest. That's okay, we can just leave them like that as well. So we just go down and check that all our classes are there and they're all matched. And then we hit OK. And we're happy to run the accuracy assessment in both pixels and percentage and click OK on that one. And what comes up here is the class confusion matrix, or this is essentially our accuracy assessment. OK, the best thing to do really is to export this to um, Excel or, or something similar so you can go save text to ASCII. Um, because the format of this isn't particularly neat, but you can still read it anyway. So the way you look at using it, we have our our ground truth or pixel our ground truth pixels um, across the across the top. So this is the region of interest that we've entered in, and the classification um, down the left hand side. And this tells us in in the first instance in this table how many pixels were selected. 
okay so what we're looking for is these diagonal totals um, and we want those we we want those to be um, the highest possible because there are ones that are going to be correct so for example um, we've got water classified areas and water as ground truth pixels and the value there is 202 okay and if you've got zeros in all the other columns that means that water was classified very well or and if you go down to the the lower table here you'll see that that's at a hundred percent there okay mangroves we've got 74 74 instances where the class of mangroves was also mangroves in the accuracy assessment and then if we go down to the the percentage we'll also see that that was classified 100% of the time is correct okay so let's look at an example of, of one which which has an off diagonal um, value so for example bare ground classified was um, what was classified as bare ground was actually a burnt area for in 496 pixels Okay, so bare ground was bare ground 46 times. So we'll see if we scroll down to the the percentage tool, um, we'll see that the percentage correct there, um, sorry, percentage correct there is is lower than 100%, and and two percent of the time it was classified incorrectly there. Okay, so that's how you look at the confusion matrix and the other main values that you're looking for is this overall accuracy which is really important this 97 percent value which is a great value but it doesn't actually tell the full story okay so this is really depending on where you selected your accuracy assessment regions of interest the cap coefficient is less biased and so we're looking at a value there of um, 0.639 so that's that's actually indicating that it's perhaps not as not as good a classification as what you would think if you got 97%. So there's a few few errors in the classification obviously and that's where you could go back and tweak the classification. Now the other thing that we want to look at is the errors of commission and omission. So an error of commission means that something was included in a class erroneously and an error of omission means that it was excluded from a class erroneously. Um, so these, this table down here gives you an indication as a percentage or as pixels if you like of what that error is, of what that error is made up of and so you can get the full values there as well and the, the percentage for um, omission and commission is, is also related to the producers and